Okay, so um, hi everyone, I'm Brian. Um, I've been with Green Security now for almost 10 years um, and for the last four years I've been just looking at security engineering, so anything from application security, security operations, uh, pen testing, DevSecOps, um, all of these terms that were quite new four or five years ago are now very commonplace. Um, yeah, I've been there uh, pretty much since the start for a lot of this. Um, diversity is something I'm really passionate about uh, and you know, being creative with especially CVs, presentations, whatever it might be. So it's something that's really close to my heart. So hopefully um, we can have a good discussion today. Hey, hello, everybody. Actually, so I'm going to go next. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Samuel, the leader, um, information security manager for a global energy company. And I look after the ISMS compliance activities from technical, but from a legal compliance point of view, facing the regulators in terms of diversity. I'm really sort of similar to Brian, keen and just share my thoughts on how the um, cyber security space can be more diverse and also using sort of presentation style mechanisms to interview candidates. Cool. Do we have Alex? I don't think he's in just yet. Um, oh, joining, so. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I'm Dennis Cruz. I, I actually, I think me and Samuel actually had a, was having a conversation and we, we said, hey, let's, let's continue over the summit. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm the CTO, uh, CTO at Glassfall uh, and uh, I've, I've been a, a big fan of uh, of of the one of the topics we're going to talk about here, which is using presentations to um, to, to highlight what you do, but also you know, I I really really believe that a diverse team is the best possible team that you can create, and I I really go out of my way to try to create diverse teams, and I think they are fundamental. And I actually want to explore the concept of diverse team because I, I think sometimes we get very narrow focus, and I, I want to bring back a topic that was actually mentioned i believe um you know by a great guy that does some really good um presentations uh, he talked about the beginning of of, of computing so let, let's go back to it so but but before we get into it the the, the main the, the first part of the, the session i really want us to to just have a talk about it and, and again if anybody wants to share some thoughts we, we can you know we can bring you in you know just let us know ask in the chat is i, I really think that cvs don't work I, I think CVs are a horrible way to represent somebody. There's, there's some industries where probably a CV is very relevant. Uh, I don't think IT security and even engineering is, is one of them. And the reason is because CVs are a really bad way to represent somebody's talent, passion, capabilities. And, and this is where you know, my, my view is that you know, part of what you do today is you need to learn how to communicate. You, lean, you need to be able to have a good way to have your ideas, present them, and, and communicate with, with, with your peers or with, with your world of existing. And creating presentations about you are a great way to do that because you control the agenda. You control the pace. You can actually talk about the things that matter to you, the examples that matter to you. So let me just show a couple of examples why I think this is very, very, very powerful. So let me just quickly share um, my, my screen and point you to actually one of the ways that we actually um, have interviewed um, in the past. And one of the things that we recommend uh, the, our candidates to do in order to, to apply. So let me just share my screen quickly and you guys should be able to see this. Can you see my, the glass wall engineering? Cool. Can you guys see that? You can see this, right? So, yeah. so one of the things we do, so Luke wrote a really, really cool. And by the way, I think this is very important. When, when you're hiring, I think it's very important to have a very sort of human uh, message from the individuals. In fact, I can show a video that I've created with, you know, for, for some recruitment, but, but I really like this, you know, document that um, Luke put together and we, we describe it, then we link to the job descriptions and we access some videos that we also recorded. And, and this is literally me and, um, and, and then the team talking about the role. And, and you can see, so, so in this video, you got Luke 
Georgina, me, and Abbas. And what we're doing is we're talking about the role. We, we actually make it a lot more personal. We talk about the roles that we have, why we want it, what is it like to join the team? So you get a much more real world feel for the values behind the individuals behind the scenes. But the key topic here is this part here where we say to make the process fair and we don't want to make initial decisions based on CVs and to allow us to help all candidates, even if they're not successful. And now you can spot the one that has two daughters because I call this the strictly come dancing experience. So if, unless, if you have watched True Come Dancing, compared to, for example, this is the UK, but compared to, for example, um, Britain Got Talent, where you can totally see that half of it is completely manipulated, right, for the story. Strictly Come Dancing is one of those where everybody that goes there is better when they finished. Like they, they all benefit from that experience. And I think that the watermark for recruitment is that we want to make the candidates better. So when the candidate finished the application process, we want to make them better because you never know. You can meet somebody that you're going to hire in your next job or in the future, or they might end up hiring you. So it's very important to create that positive experience, but also to create a rewarding model where the candidate spends time with you in your, in your you know, recruitment process, but they get as much if or if if not more out of that experience than you, because if you don't select it, of course, it usually is a zero sum game. You apply, you don't get selected, you actually are negative because you spend time on it, where what you wanna do is you want to apply and, and come out it better from, from the process. So what we basically say here, and, and I will get into the worldly maps in a second, but the first part is the topic of this session, which is this. So we basically say, can you create a presentation about you? And what we do is we give three examples. And, and I'll start with this one because Petra is amazing. You can see her already in other sessions here. And when I saw this, my only question was whether Petra was a real person because I knew I was gonna hire her immediately. I saw this and, and I was already, as somebody that is gonna hire somebody, I was already in a really good place. And I'll walk you through it. So, so in, compare what I'm about to show you with a typical CV, which actually Petra at this moment in time wasn't very good because she was doing a master's, she hadn't finished, she didn't have a huge amount of work experience. Now her CV is way better than it was when we hired her, but this, was, this, this presentation made me wanna hire her straight away because what she did was um, uh, basically, well, come, on, come out of it now, I don't want uh, to do this, come on. Uh, See, why did slide share? Okay, there you go. Go on. Cool, right. So if I walk you through this, well, you can't do it now. <laughs> this is annoying. Seriously? It's slide share. Oh, you reached the end of subscription preview. This is really annoying. Mm. So, okay. I think, Dennis, just to, I guess, get your thoughts on it as well. Yeah. You know, uh, this uh, a presentation is you know, it's quite a time consuming process for good reason. So what I would like to see from this, I'd say can, currently we're seeing not that many candidates available and the ones that are available have less time than they've ever done before. So from a, from a, I guess from a recruiter perspective and, and a hiring manager, do you think sometimes this may then end up not getting enough candidates in because of the time element of it? Well, I, I think that's a risk, but, but look at what you're saying. You're basically saying that uh, the candidate is not going to care enough about the role they're applying, that is not going to spend some time to present him better, and they're doing a scattergun approach to 5, 10, 20, 30 companies, and they're basically bouncing off each other. And I, I know, I'll, yes, there's, there's a lot of talent that we want to get, but I, I also feel that for the candidate these days, for the, good, for the good comments, for the good candidates at the moment, it matters as much the company they go into than, than anything else, because they will be able to get multiple job offers. And mm -hmm. look, if there's a candidate out there that they want to hit the market, they want to talk to 10 different companies, they want to get the highest bids, and they will go for that, Great. Look, that's fine. That's a pure capitalist approach to recruitment, and it's fine. 
But I want the candidate that is going to be passionate about what we do, that wants to go on a journey, that looks at what we do and going, wow, this is an amazing place to join. Now, if you happen to work for a company that, you know, let me be bland, you know, it doesn't have good values, that you don't have a good story, that the only competition you have in the market is how fast you reply and your low bar of entry, look, then that's fine, right? Then <laughs> that works. Yes. But, but the idea that a, candidate, a good candidate, which is passionate, passionate, is not going to react well when you're passionate on the other side, when you basically invest on them and you want to make them better. You know, for, for me, you know, that already selecting the candidates that we're not interested to talk to. Mm. And I so said, I'm not disagreeing that I think the CV as it is needs a lot of work, um, especially with you know, nowadays security engineers where everyone writes threat modeling, everyone writes you know, secure coding, but actually what is involved in that when you do it, a presentation would bring a lot, much more detail, but then it, is there maybe a way of standardizing a presentation as opposed to a CV where you can highlight what you do without it looking like a boring CV? Because yeah. I, I agree with you, right? And I, I would argue that that's for the recruitment guys in here, that should be one of your jobs. Right. So I, ha I have to say, Denis, I'm firmly, I mean, I don't disagree about the CVs being broken. I don't disagree about the process being broken. But for me, if I saw this as an autistic person, or even as any of the various neurodivergence that I recommend, I'd look at this and see, oh, great, I can put in tons of effort for another exercise of NT gatekeeping. And you're going to exclude a lot of people who have to manage their energy for what they apply to in that circumstance, as opposed to the other way around. So while I do understand that it is designed to filter for only the really committed versus the capitalist, and otherwise you have to interview to pull that out, um, I would find that this level of pre-work, I would expect to not just reduce my regular applicant pool, but exclude the 20% of autists who actually can get into appointment. So I'd be very careful about that. It, it very much depends on knowing communication patterns that are unique to your environment from my perspective. Look, I, I agree. And to be honest, like I always get the same pushback, right? And every company I work for, right? And, I, and we, we're always flexible. Right. You know, if we see a great CV, right, we go, OK, fine. You know, we compromise. But my, see, my problem is not that. Right. My problem is losing the candidates that we should be talking to. See, it's the other way around. Right. Because I don't think that we allow those candidates that are good to stand out because mm. they might not have the right experience. They might not have the right titles. It's very easy to look at somebody's CV and going, well, this person is not experienced enough. Like threat modeling is a good example. Right. You could have some. Three, so look, I can give you five CVs with different levels of thread modeling experience. How do you pick? You can't interview the five, right? How do you pick the one to interview? I think maybe I can just come in here as well. I've just seen a comment yeah. from, from, from Avid. I think there should be a, a fine balance between sort of, because most a normal application have a CV and a cover letter. So it could be maybe a third option, either a CV, presentation, or a cover letter, and then allowing sort of the pool of applicants select those in terms of options and following which document comes in, either CV cover letter or CV presentation, then taking candidates to the um, next stage, that would probably be my thoughts. Yeah, but that, that, look, that's fine. Like that would already be, you know, that would already be better, um, you know, that, that workflow, right? Because you're now allowing uh, a certain degree of, of flexibility, right? And you're allowing that, that extra candidate to, to show that, that talent. And, and, and look, this, this pains me because I, pains me for, for, for two places, right? One of them, because I know I've made mistakes in the past for not being able to uh, find the right candidates because the right candidate was there, it's just the CV didn't stand out. But, but I also have data and evidence. When, when I did uh, a much more flexible, uh, approach model. So I, I'll tell what. So when when we did the Upwork, well, big Upwork push, one of the things that we did, and, and we didn't have time to do, for example, CVs. Uh, sorry, we didn't have time to do lots of interviews. Uh, we had, we had to be very efficient in growing. Uh, and if you know, Upwork is basically a recruitment portal. Um, what we did was instead of instead of finding selecting one or two candidates, we will pick the top five and we will give them ten hours during the week. And what and what happened time and time again 
was that the amazing candidates that we found probably were not the top two on the original analysis of their CV. But when we saw them in action, we actually um, basically, um, we, we saw them you know, for, for what they are really, really good at. Now, info, actually, I, I don't know your name, so Info Crow, <laughs> Info Set Crow, uh, basically, I call it Info, right? Uh, unless you want to tell us your name. The, 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 the word you used, which I will pick up on, is you said free work. Now, there has been abuses in the past of companies who are literally asking for free work in the recruitment process, where they say, hey, here's our marketing strategy. Tell me how you do better. Or, yeah. hey, you know, show us how you can find uh, X leads or show us how you can find vulnerabilities on our website. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how can we make the candidate present themselves better? So the work that the candidate is doing is not for us, it's for the candidate. And that already again tells me something. If you, and, and look, I care less about the design than I care more about the journey that the person has gone to. See, L let me, uh, now, now it works. Let me share this, let me share the screen because I think you'll see what I mean in here which is basically this. So, so if you look at Petra's presentation, right? Here, she says who she is. Look, immediately, this tells you about she can communicate. Because you, you, a lot of people say in your CV, it's great communicator, great this, great that, cool, then show me. And, he, and he, she has a good design sense, but even if there wasn't as well designed as this, and I've seen some that are not as well designed, these already shows that she was able to pick up what are the five things that I want to basically uh, say. And if you, if you look closely here, right, she's actually, at this moment in time, she was very thin on security because the only thing she had was this. But you can see that there's lots of stuff here that are very powerful. For example, the fact that she's an athlete gives me a lot about her teamwork, about her ethics. The fact that she actually works on emergency doctor Wow, talk about somebody who can handle under pressure, right? So, and then you look at the next one, a nice joke. So I think this is great, right? You know, some people might go, well, you know, it's this, it's that. This is really funny. And it tells me that she has a good sense of humor. It tells me that, so I'm already learning about her personality, right? And there she is, right? Then she's able to say how, how this shaped her. And, and when I met her, the only thing I wanted to again confirm was that, yeah, she has this. But you can see that she, this is already a great way to, to shape. And this is about her, not about the job she's going into. So, and then, you know, she goes into how playing netball shaped her, really great model, who does she wants to be? See, look, ethical hacker, cybersecurity professional. Remember that this was before she was a cybersecurity professional. Uh, she was still to finish her master's. And then she did the worldly maps, which of course, you know, by now, you know, she was really like, you know, doing kind of stuff that we're doing and then you know this was great right and then she evolved and and when we talked about her i spent the time talking about this about her experience with the worldly maps how she learned but also some of the other things that she mentioned but this presentation is a presentation about her right so she didn't do this work for us this wasn't free work this was work that allowed her with a cv that was much worse than every other candidate that we saw be the one that we actually said, she's the one. That's a particularly good example of presentation. You know, I, I think, you know, despite, as you say, this being better, being worse than design, that's a very well put presentation, which would, you know, given her journey would be amazing. But, you know, I put, if it was me personally, I'm not very creative. Um, my presentations would look quite boring. Um, so what I guess is how, how what's a secret to standardizing something for everyone because ultimately we you know a cv is it's really old but um it works for most people and yes we cvs are, are boring to look at most of them but i see you know 10 15 cvs a day that are new and some of them are really amazing so i, I do think there's an element of those who can write a good cv will do a better presentation those who can't write a very good cv will probably do a really bad presentation too so I, I would love to know a way where we can make CVs better, but maybe not make it so complex that 
those that aren't creative, those who, um, as InfoSec Crow uh, mentioned, who are maybe neurodiverse, can still stand out and do well, because that's not always going to be the case. And look, and I actually think that's where you can help, because the, the, the thing about diversity, right, and, and I'm very aware that some, some of these, if you're very, if you're introvert, right, can be a bit of a challenge. But, but there's times where that's what you want to hire. So, you know, every person is special. What you need to do is talk to them and understand what makes them special. And, and there's nothing wrong with you sitting down with a candidate and going, okay, what makes you tick? What, what is good about you? And, and look, if you're boring and you're going for a, a boring, not, okay, this is the, I have a problem with boring, right? If you are calm, measured, right? If you think about things, if you take your time, right? Those are great properties, you know? And so if I'm hiring, for that role, that's kind of what I want to see, right? So if I'm hiring for, for example, a role, let's say that actually, you know, good example. Like if you if you hire for a role that you want somebody with that kind of profile, then you might see a presentation and going, well, this is great, but that person is definitely not a good fit for this. So the, the good thing of the presentation is that allows you it allows you to tell a story, allows you to say, look, I really care about this then show me examples, right? Show me examples of the things that you are passionate about. Show mm -hmm. me a screenshot. So, so when I talk to you, I don't kind of go down the line and try to reverse engineer. I go, oh, cool, look, I can relate to this part here. Tell me more about this. And, and you, the thing about this is you can hide in a CV. You can't hide in a presentation. And it's okay, for example, to have a presentation where you say, I've done lots of thread modeling. I've done this, this, this but here's an empty box because I cannot show you any of them. That's cool, right? Like mm -hmm. that already tells me that the person has them thread models, but they, they know that they can't share it. Yeah, no, I can, I, I can definitely get behind the idea. I, I say, when I look at a CV and it's, there's something different about it, whether it's boring or really interesting on the other side, that to me is what attracts me to go, oh, I'll have a look. Even if it's them bad, you still have a look. And I think that's where yeah. people can miss out. So. I'm fully behind the idea of making, not getting rid of the CV, but how can we make it more interesting and make people think, I want to speak to this person? Yeah. I know, Samuel, info. Info for me, I say, I say, I say a, a hiring manager would be a case of that balance. Because if I was recruiting for a role and I'm, nowadays you get 200 applicants, I do not want to look at 200 presentations. <laughs> what I think ultimately is sort of, okay, what is a what is the best bit from good CV? So from a recommendation from Brian, and then we'll put you in a room and get the best part of the presentation, and then a framework which can be adopted across the industry, where then we can then start teaching people. Okay, when you're applying for a job, do not take the mass approach because ultimately it's just a CV sending out a lot of applications. So how do we sort of increase the and improve the communication skills of applicants? And I think that's that framework would be something we could output then best part of the CV, best part of the presentation. And then when people start applying, it's a process of, okay, so I'm applying for this role. Okay, how do I express myself? And what do I put? Rather than just Googling, you know, just putting text, text, text. I want to know more about this candidate. So when at least it comes to my desk, I would, okay, okay, I can understand this individual. I can sort of see what the interests are. And with pictures, they do say it tells a thousand words. And I think once you sort of see a few pictures, okay, yes, I get I, I get the, the point. And then as a, as a, as a path then you can understand okay it's creative it's calm it's colorful and that's probably that that framework would be very ideal for me but i agree sort of moving from cvs yes presentations maybe not what can we do in the middle and i think that would be the the interesting part on how we can move it forward and i think for engineers as well i see too many cvs with no githubs and that that exactly. to me that to me is the first red flag you call exactly. yourself an engineer, there's no it's GitHub. Like you're, you're applying for a React position. You're applying yeah. for a backend position and, and you don't point me to your website. Like, sorry, right? Like, what planet are you in, right? Like, come on, you know, like, how do you want me to judge your work, right? You know, I'm not going to judge uh, the, the thing. And, and yeah, okay, Avid says, oh, we need to bring you in, man. If Avid is here, let's bring Avid into the conversation. Yeah, not everybody has GitHub commit. I agree. Oh, I'm not... Um, Alana, okay, can you guys, can you make Avid um, a co-host? Yeah, not everybody can highlight the best of their work, but 
But if you are, for example, a certain type of developer and you cannot wire up you know, something that you can show on GitHub or on a page, then um, you know, that's an issue. But, but look, Avid, like he's an example, right? You, you say, well, most of my work is in NDA, but if you go back and look at your public persona and the stuff that you've done publicly, there's enough material there to make any employee going, I need to hire this person. Right? And, and I think, and I agree with you, right? Like, you know, if, if, you, if you have someone who says, I'm a GitHub expert, you know, I'm, I'm this, and, and, you, and all I'm saying is, okay, I wanna call your, I wanna call your bluff, right? I wanna show me the stuff because once you do that, and, and Samuel, what I would say, and I tell you by experience, you don't get from 20 CVs, you don't get 20 presentations, first of all. You of get four or five, but even, and, if, and for 200, you might get 10, but the better thing, and, and, and I've experienced this, I can review a presentation in one minute and know if I need to meet that person. And by the way, I've chosen to meet not the most and better design presentation. Again, I want to clarify here, this is not about, this is not a design contest. This is about, does the person understood the brief uh, that we want, which is very, very different. But you, I can review a presentation very quickly because it's a visual thing, right? You take a PDF, you go flick, 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 flick. Yes, I like this person. Take a CV, like the mental engagement that you have. So I'm not going to review 20. And even worse, if I review 20 or 50, by the time I get to the 10 or 20, my brain is gone, right? I, I'm making irrational decisions, right? And I don't like that because I, I want to find the gem in those 20, in those 50 that I've seen. Yeah, and I mean, I've seen CVs with seven, eight, nine pages, and at that point, you do sort of think, "What the?" F yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I yeah, it's a uh, and, you, and you're telling me that somebody that has a seven-page CV cannot do a best of, right? Is not able somebody, and I guarantee you that person in that CV at the top will say, "I'm a great communicator. I'm a great leader. I'm I'm a really good project manager. I'm a really good architect." I'm going cool. Show me a diagram. Right? You're telling me that in a couple of hours, you are not able to produce materials that even if you said, this is a very small subset of what I could do, already doesn't allow you to stand on and going, cool, this is somebody that is interesting to speak to. Definitely, I completely agree on that. You know, and, and it's, 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 I actually think it's about making it fair. Look, and I think from a recruitment agency, you guys can help a lot because I, I wanna pick on something that Samuel said. Samuel, you said you want to make them, you want to help them to present themselves better, right? You said, and guess what? Getting someone to do a presentation and asking them to do a presentation is, do, is doing exactly that, is helping them to present themselves better. Yeah. Oh, go on, Samuel. I guess maybe, Brian, from, from, your, from your point of view, would you say the, the framework really exists to help applicants do a presentation about themselves. I guess that'll be the next question. Yeah. I haven't done this before, how do I do this? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so go on, go on, Brian. I wanna show one example. I, I'm gonna show how you can cheat with, I, I'll show you my CV, which I, I cheated, right? Which I think is a great way to do. Okay, cool, but uh, go, Brian. Yeah, I, 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 I think the framework is definitely there, you know, and we should, as, you know, experts in our sector, we should be there to help them to make those positions better. Um, but I think I'll go back to my original point, meaning where I said where a lot of the people we approach for our clients are not looking for a job. So, you know, for us to then say, we'll offer you to do a better presentation, they'll go, I, I don't want to do a CV, let alone a presentation. So it, it's definitely a case of, it depends what type of role we're hiring. Um, if, it, if it's a real in-demand role, then yeah. we may find, say, like a CISO, a CISO we would almost say to them, look, you need to do something better than just a CV because there are going to be others. But when we've got you know, an example, an application security engineer who was really in demand, there's no incentive to do a, a, a okay. presentation. So, Ryan, here's one you're going to like. You know, in that scenario, who, who's the first one that needs to do the presentation? Is the company hiring? Yep, I, I would, yeah, again, I'd agree with you. In, in that scenario where you're saying you had hunting, right? Where you talk to a particular company and they said, hey, I'm looking for this, this, and this. The first ones that need to do a presentation about themselves 
is the company that you're hiring, where they need to say why they're amazing, why is a great opportunity, what are they doing, why is it exciting to join that company. So absolutely, right? It's not, it's not a one-way street here, right? I think the people that are hiring also have the responsibility to create a package that makes the ones that you're trying to attract super excited to come to your way. Yeah, I can, and, said, and that's not being done enough across the board. Oh, yeah. As, so, as in sure everyone's aware. <laughs> so what, I do, what I'm saying, what I, look, this is interesting because for example, I, I, when I did this, I'll, some of the things, I would say, why you put this there, right? Why are you putting you playing drums here? Right? And I said, look, if somebody's going to look at this and thinking that that's not professional enough, I really don't want to talk to those individuals. Somebody who says, oh, I like the fact that this individual has other things, can do other things at a good level. For me, that's, you want to push the envelopes. Where I cheated, and don't, don't read the, the things here because you know, I'm privileged to have actually blessed a lot of people gave me great comments, but it doesn't matter. What matters is I was able to get a lot of individuals to go on a record about me. And this is what I meant I cheated. I went to LinkedIn and I said, give me a recommendation. Now, you don't need to have recommendation at this level. What you need is, you know, look, one of the questions that you ask on interviews, if I talk to your colleagues, if I talk to your boss, what would they say about you, right? Show me that. So Brian, if, you might say that you're introverted, you're very boring, but I want to read that from your colleagues. And I'm sure that your colleagues are not going to say that. They're going to say that Brian is a great professional. He was a joy to work with. We work on his, you work on that. I highly recommend him. So this is, a, this is a way to cheat. Go to LinkedIn, find the, the people that you helped in the past, find the people that know you, get them to give you a recommendation, slap them on your CV. So you look at it, most of my CV is this. And I'm like, you know, if I wanna talk about this, I go like this, this tells the story. And then what happens is when somebody reads this, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna read all of this, but there's a common theme here and they can pick on a couple and they can go. And then I add that, but more importantly, I add the stuff that I do, like the summit. I like the fact that I publish a bunch of books, which by the way, you guys can all do because it doesn't cost anything to publish on, on, on here, right? And I do presentations. And you know, I think in graphs and maps, right? There you go, right? So if anybody thinks I'm conventional, this slide helps to remove the people that want a conventional person, right? But, but I think that's important. I think it's important to, to basically show your personality. So for me, that, my, that CV from, from mine shows my energy, shows my personality, shows who I am. But I cheated because I use LinkedIn quotes, which you can all get. Yeah, and, and to be quite honest with you, that's something that we, oh, oh, I as a recruiter will ask, what would your boss say about you? What, what, you know, what would your colleague that you sit next to say about you? And that sometimes goes a long way. And often if I know who they are and they're happy for me to speak to that person, you often get more information from one conversation there than you would Absolutely. be from 10 pages of CV. Absolutely. And all you need is for a couple of those individuals to be respected individuals in the industry or somebody that you know or somebody that, you know, you, you, you can get connected to go, oh, cool. You know, if you ever want to have more conversations, but, but that itself already tells a lot. And, and look, you know, if you've been on the industry for a while, you should be in a position where people should be recommending you but you need to go out of your way like you need to work on your cv you need to work on your your network mm. yeah i mean i'm personally a big advocate of the linkedin cheats i've got you know a few myself yeah. from so I, th I think it's something that but you know if, if do people use linkedin does everyone use linkedin that you know that is here in the, in the, in the room for example do we, do we use it enough too much but, but here, the kind of doesn't need everybody. It's just the kind of just needs five or six recommendations from LinkedIn, right? Yeah. But do you see that, like you said, three recommendations from LinkedIn about a particular topic that somebody else said are way more credible than anything that you can put on a CV. Yeah. And, and also just to go back to the threat modeling, say, for example, your former manager said, the best threat model I've ever worked with, we finally have something here that we can actually measure and say, so-and-so said that this person is the best threat yeah. modeler we've ever seen. So yes, there definitely needs to be more of that. Um, yeah. And again, if not LinkedIn, your CV or presentation could still have that. There's yeah. no reason why it couldn't. 
Get quotes. Yeah, look, even if somebody said, look, I'll give you a quote, but don't put it on the internet, you know, just share it with CV. That's still good, right? That, that might still work. The, 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 the point is, what can we create? What models going, actually, Samuel, to your point, what frameworks can we put in place? What things that you can do, structures that you can do to, um, what's it called? Uh, to make it easier to present the individuals and what they do. So my formula would be, you need to start by kind of who you are. You need to show some good accolades professionally. But you know what I really care about is who you are outside work. What else do you do? What else do you care about? Do you help with charities? Do you play sports? Do you do this? Do what, what other things you do that makes you, you? And sometimes those are more important, like more and more, especially when you talk about diversity, more and more, you hire on potential, you hire on values. And I think that's where slightly melting into the next topic, diversity. Yeah. The biggest problem that I find is that too many companies use diversity as a tick box as opposed to a genuine drive to change. So too many people say, oh, let's just you know, make sure we have one diverse candidate out of five yeah. interviewing. I think until we get away from that movement, of we must be diverse to actually let's be diverse. Let's actually do things to be diverse, which starts at job descriptions. Yeah. You know, whether you do job descriptions videos, too many of them are not inviting enough. Yeah. They they go out looking for that particular person. So that's again from, from my perspective, I mean to see a lot of change in that one because diversity is not a real it. thing. Oh, there it is. The book is this one. Sorry, give me a second. No worries. What do you think, Samuel, on that? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Brian. I feel I think um, sort of the presentation. This, this is the one. If you guys read this book from from Jane Franklin, this uh -huh. is an amazing book. And and this has a huge amount of great data exactly on that topic. And uh, and sorry, I, I'm I'm a big book fan, so and I knew I had it here on my bookshelf. Um, but. And I've looked, I learned on the hard way, right? Like, and actually this is definitely a problem. Like there's an individual, there's a type of individual that will look at a job spec and going 10 things and going, yeah, yeah, I can do it. Never done it, never done it, never done it. I might busk on that. Yeah, I'm going to apply. There's other types of individuals that are gonna go, yes, no, yes, 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 a bit. Yes, I'm not going to apply. Hmm. And, and that's a problem, right? And actually, and that's where also like, I, I don't like to be, to be losing candidates because of it. I much prefer a candidate that can show me all the things that they're good at. And I don't care if they don't know this and that and that technology because they can learn that. What I care about is, can they learn? You know, are yeah. they, do they have the type of personality? Do they have the type of, 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 of profile that we're looking for in that particular job? Yeah, and that, and that is the bit that is real tricky, especially you know, when you think about how you write a job description, how do you attract relevant people but also not not put anyone off that is relevant um it's real tricky but you know if i if i think some of the engineering or pen testing specs a lot of them mention words like do you like breaking and or do you like being you know offensive and all of these things that are words that we need to get away from using because too many people don't associate breaking with their job um and yes it is breaking and rebuilding uh but those types of things need to change interviews for example um, you make a good point, Dennis. You will look for people that can do X, Y, Z, but some interviewers will, will interview in a way that unless you have X, Y, Z, we're not going to proceed. And that's how you can come across in an interview. Yeah. And even, even yeah. if they're successful, they might say, look, I don't feel welcome here. So yeah. that's you know, from my side, I think that I would love to see a lot of change in. Mm -hmm. well, I think also for, for me, the presentation comes across as an enabler coming from the sort of the higher into the diversity part because not only are you sort of getting the technical information you're getting to know more about the individual and i think that's quite important because in there you can say okay i can see you like drumming you may not necessarily want to put it on your cv or by the time you've got to where drumming is as you've got fatigue of reading the series and i think just that presentation is a soft spot between okay this is who the person is this is what they work on and this is how they are colors Pictures and diagram can sort of get a flair for the individual and how to fit into the company organization of yeah. And look, and that's why I always put worldly maps in the presentation, right? I was I was asked for worldly maps. So I always go and say, hey, 
can you try to do a worldly map, right? Like this. And I do this for two reasons. First of all, if they have worldly maps, we have already something in common and, we, and, and, and they will already be in a, a different level. If they've never seen it before, I'm yet to find somebody who looked at this and going, wow, this is really interesting. So, so what, I'm, what I got here, and it could be something different in the future, I wanted to find something that allow me to measure, is that individual hungry to learn? Is that individual at the state where they still see something new and they're going, wow, this is really cool. I want to learn more. And it's okay. You know, I had cases where they go, look, I didn't have a lot of time. It's really cool. I, I got this, this, but I just send you a default uh, cup of tea one. And then we walk through it. But it's, it is interesting because it already allows us to measure how they learn. Because that's the other thing you want to measure. You want you want individuals, and unless look, unless you want to hire a robot, and it's a very very specific job, and you need somebody who's already completely molded and is ready to go, and it's like a very mechanical transaction. Well, yeah, maybe you don't need that. But the talent that you would really want to attract, and this is not very important, especially from a diverse element. What I'm really interested in now is how do you hire across um, across sort of um horizontal transfers of talent. So, you know, for example, you, know, you guys know that it's very hard to hire for AppSec. Like if you try to hire, for example, a DevOps with AppSec experience, you know, <laughs> at a certain price range, forget about it, right? It's like a freaking unicorn. Um, so the, the, the thing about this is, for example, how do you find individuals that have some skills and they want to go into a different role? Now, they're not going to have everything you need in a new, new role. But I actually believe that the way you find diverse talent is by giving opportunities to individuals who don't meet your checkbox that you have on a particular role, but have the potential and the capability to raise to, the, to that occasion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I've just seen a comment from, from Ace from Ace Hedger. He's gone through the culture interview and then he's now going to the more project and technical. And I think that interview phase is he has to, he or she has to learn more to technologies which they haven't used and then become proficient so i guess they're, they're trying to understand how quick can this individual learn and sort of the output from that and absolutely it's sort of that yeah. whole learning process okay well you might not be there here's some technologies you've got seven days or you can do a presentation and then present on that then you can see yeah. the progress and the learning of the individual yeah and i'm telling you what if you're going for a senior role what you should do is this and I've, i found this very funny Right, if you Google um, uh, this, can you guess what you're going to find? Uh, security strategy, right? If you Google this, you probably know Babylon Health, right? <laughs> what you're going to find is my presentation that I did when I applied to that role. Okay, not everybody needs to create 100 page slides, right, about this. But uh, see, I did this for two reasons. First of all, I was doing a research anywhere on a company and I wanted a way to communicate what I was finding. So you know, a lot of this is NHS and, and stuff, but I also picked up their strategy. For example, like I picked up Babylon Health strategy and rewrote it for security. So you know, this might be a little bit more of an extreme, right? But if you're going for a senior role, you want to. For example, like I, I took Babylon strategy and I added the green bits are the bits that I've added, right? So are, are the red. So I was able to pick up information about it and I created, you can see most of it is stuff that was way out there, but I created an analysis and I did a lot of research. And actually what happens is that, you know, when I basically talked to them, I could talk about that presentation. So if you think about it, like I, I guided the conversation already to something that was already good for me. And then I publish it, right? Because I'm I'm all for openness, right? And then you know, um, it's and it's and look, it's my materials, right? Like there's nothing there that it's you know it's copyrighted to them. I I didn't had access to no information, had access to nothing else. I did all of that on the back of my ideas, so I made myself better. And in in now when I want to show what I can do, like ironically, Avid said. You know, okay, a lot of the stuff I do is an NDA. I have the same problem. So I, I actually killed two birds with one stone. I said, hey, I'm applying for this role. I, I'm actually doing some homework anyway. Some of my best work I can't publish because it was NDA. Why don't I just create it and publish it, right? Yeah. So that's another level, up, right? <laughs> yeah. 
just pick up on what Greg and Ace are doing the conversation there. So I completely agree with you. And this is the problem. You've got hiring managers who will say, I'm looking for all the skills. You then say, okay, well, why do you want to move? If you can do all of it. And then it's, oh, because of financial reasons, then you don't get hired because you only want to move because of money. So I would say, you know, always aim for roles where you can't do everything because that's going to be where A, you develop and B, whoever you join should be as lucky that you're going to learn all this new, yeah. new skills, tech. So yeah, definitely never apply for a role if you tick all the boxes. It's not right. See, I, I once, I actually remember doing an interview process. I, I asked them to create, I'm a big fan of Amazon, you know, um, the press release. I remember asking the candidates to write two job specs. One was the JD that they wanted to have in six months from now and a JD they want to have in two, two years from now. And what I'm basically saying is that we're going to hire you based on your potential, but I want to know where you want to be in six months from now. And I want to know where you want to be in two years from now. And I want to make sure we are aligned uh, because the best, the best situation is when you hire somebody for a short-term fix that you want to do. So you kind of need them to kind of know what they're doing a little bit there, but what you really want is what they will become you know, in, in the next level. And Agreed. by the way, yeah, go on, sorry, sorry. It's this sort of thing that I'll do, a candidate must have sort of a, a, a mentor and a development plan. Those are two things for coming for a role because that role is, you want to develop into the role and then sort of bring out the role to, to move forward. That's what I was going to add to that. Yeah. And by the way, Avid said, oh, I summit. Look, I've got jobs on the back of, of my contribution to our summit and I hired or on the OS summit. So if you're looking for a place to show your talents and you're looking for a place to meet colleagues or possibly employees or talent, I think the summit is a great place because when you present, you actually are showing who you are. You're showing your personality, you're showing your talents. So I think things like the summit and others are great places for candidates and employers to show what they're doing, how cool it is, what they're doing. Look. There's presentations here that you look at who they are and which company you work for, and you go, wow, I want to work for that company. Because look at what they're doing. Look at how they're thinking. Look at um, you know, how they're approaching the problem. So it's, it's all about how can you allow both the company and the talent to stand out in a way that is fair and is better for them by doing that. So for me, that's, that's the model. No, um, so I, com I completely agree that. And standing out is the biggest challenge. I think everywhere you look, as a company, how do you stand out? As a candidate, how do you stand out? Um, and as you said, Dennis, sometimes men, you don't have to stand out. You have to fit the box that they're looking for. So, you know, yeah. so I would never call a candidate boring. I said their CVs, by the way. Uh, but yes, sometimes not every candidate has to be an extrovert or an introvert. So, yeah. Think, yeah. no, go ahead. No, nailing that is really difficult and you know I, I see it from i see it from both sides where i get the candidates who get frustrated the clients get frustrated similarly when there's a good fit there you know it's a quite really cool to see a good process come to do it together yeah, yeah. I, I agree and look cvs are designed for a very specific set of individuals so cvs are well designed for maybe 10 or 20 percent of the target audience also of, of the people who use it. And I think that, you know, we, we need to find, the point here is that we need to find good ways, especially when you're looking at more and, and diverse. And, and the, the, the comment I just want to pick maybe to end it is I don't think diverse is about, well, it's, it's only about race, ethnicity, um, and, and gender. I actually think it's about building multi, multidisciplinary, multi-personality, uh, you know, teams that have a right balance across the, the multiple uh, players. And, and, and for that, you need you know, different uh, ways of, of putting them together. And I think a lot of it, the, 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 the comment I would make in the beginning, there's a great presentation. Um, I, I remember the name, it's a guy called Brett Victor. And, and the guy comes in and he talks about, it's a, he, he has a great presentation called Inventing on Principle. But the other presentation he's done he pretends to be an IBM executive, I think in 1970s. And he talks about computing and how computing is gonna be a, a next big thing. And one of the things he talks about was the first generation of computer engineers were not computer engineers, because guess what? 
they didn't exist. There wasn't computing engineers. So the, the, the biggest evolution that we saw in computing actually happened in, in those first 10 to 20 years. And it was, it was done by poets. It was done by radiologists, by, by professors, by mathematicians, by physical engineers, by computer, because people did by hands. Those were the ones who created a lot of innovation. And in that presentation, he talks about like something like, oh, you might have this Intel, I think, and this single processor, one execution after the other. It would be a shame if that became the future of computing because there's all these great ways that we're exploring. But the point is that I think we need to widen the pool talent by bringing other people into, for example, cybersecurity um, that are not cybersecurity experts, but that we can make them experts very quickly if they have other skills. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I, I think the, the beauty about the presentation is a CV, if you don't have sort of cybersecurity experience, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's going to read through, yeah, no certification, no threat modeling, no IR. Well, with the presentation, it allows me as a hiring manager to understand, okay, is this person creative? Um, do you have the ability to learn um, sort of what sort of things they're into? And from there, from a diversity point of view, you can say, okay, well, I want to speak to this person because they've seen, they've seen the job description and they've made the effort to sort of go through a presentation. And I think this is sort of an, an ability to sort of learn and kind of embed it into the company. And I think it's, it's a way of opening the yeah. application rather than just a CV. That's exactly my point, right? I, I think that, yes, maybe we lose the 10% of individuals that are very introverted, but guess what? Most likely their CVs are not going to be that good anyway, right? So if they're already shy, sometimes their CVs might not be, they're already going to have this advantage. But I actually think that those individuals with maybe some help can, can, can help to, to represent what they do. But the worry is the other individuals in the middle that also get lost. And the amazing talent that get, doesn't get given the opportunity, like you said, um, Samuel, that they might not have all that cybersecurity experience. They might not have all that um, pedigree, but maybe they are a doctor. Maybe they, they worked as a manager in the local Starbucks, which already tells me a lot about how good they are under pressure or Nando's or somewhere else or, or play professionally or X, Y, Z. So those activities can tell you more about somebody's personality and ability to learn than anything else. So the question is, how do you make that stand out? Which is, I think, the, the big theme here. Yeah. Cool. It's been a problem for a long time. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, wrapping up, any final comments from you, Brian, mm -hmm. and then Samuel? <clears throat> no, just really good to talk about this. I think maybe just one for me. When you show the, the, the CV of the your, your, your colleague. Athletics, okay, quite competitive, and also work in the medical sector, meaning can handle under pressure. That, you can't ensure that in a CV, and I think that's the cross point. So, okay, in text, you wouldn't really understand that, yeah. but I think when you see it, well, okay, under pressure, and then, you know, an ability to either be on an, an the offensive side of things and the character to win, and I think that sort of clearly visualizes it, and as a higher manager, you want to know more about the individual. That's just my last words. I, I couldn't have said that better, man. Completely agree with you. Cool. All right. I think we're on the hour. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I think this is clearly see this is a topic I have a lot of passion for, and uh, and uh, but also thanks Samuel, thanks uh, Brian for your your your, your contribution, and your thoughts, and and looking. I'm not saying you know this is one of those things that we're still trying to figure it out, right? It's I don't think we have solved this. What we're trying to do is actually help people to stand out. And like you said, stand out actually is the, right, the key word, right? It's about the candidate standing out and about the employee standing out and making sure that we find the right candidate for the right opportunity for the right company and then make that match. And when that happens, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, Dennis. Cool. Thanks, Samuel.